أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of God, the Beneficent, the Merciful صفوان ابن أمية اینجوری که از مختلف قصه هاش استفاده میشه According to various reliable historical accounts, Safan bin Umayya was one of the chief warmongers against the Holy Prophet of Islam and Islam. This person supplied weapons for those people who wanted to fight against the Muslims. He also funded the armies that wanted to attack the community of Muslims. Besides all of this, he also encouraged various Arab nations and tribes to rise against the Holy Prophet. In the first war that pagans ignited against the Holy Prophet, Safwan bin Umayyah was the person who made the biggest donation to this war. He gave 500 dinars for the cause of fighting the Holy Prophet. With that money, he could buy 1,000 sheep. We can get it from other traditions in which uh, the Prophet gave one dinar to one of his companions and he could use the money to buy two sheep. So in the first war against the Holy Prophet by the pagans, Safwan <coughs> provided weapons for the army well an army needs weapons spears swords armors and shields and this was all what Safan bin Umayya supplied he also gave 500 dinars and in addition to all of that he also encouraged people to rise against the Holy Prophet he paid many poets so that they seem poets to encourage the public and mobilize armies against the Holy Prophet of Islam. Nonetheless, the Holy Prophet was so good to this person, Safan bin Umayya, that he finally became a Muslim. His children became a Muslim and and even he was one of the among the people who narrated traditions from the Holy Prophet the Prophet's behavior and dealing with such a person a person who did his best to fight Muslims and Islam. However, the Prophet's sublime morals, which should be considered as a miracle, changed the course and the life of this person. One of the poets that was paid by Safan to sing poets against the Holy Prophet, this person was a very talented poet. Culture is a very powerful tool to mobilize people. 
Suhail bin Am, who was a very talented poet, he encouraged people to fight against the Holy Prophet. The Prophet did not try to punish any of these two people. Historical accounts say, you can find it in Bihar al-Anwar and other books of history. That some companions of the Holy Prophet, they tried to arrest and capture some people like Safan bin Umayyah, Abu Sufyan. They wanted to bring these people to the presence of the Holy Prophet so that the Prophet would blame them and criticize them for what they had done, for their acts of villainy and rebellion. However, the Prophet did not give enough time to the companions to criticize or blame these people. As soon as they were brought to the Holy Prophet, the God's Holy Messenger, as always, he was having a very happy expression, a very kind and friendly expression. He said to those people, he said to those people that this story of you and me is the same as the story of Yusuf, Prophet Yusuf, and his brothers. And this was the end of it. Nobody dared to say anything or criticize those people. These morals, these great morals, is what moved Islam forward. And the conquest of Mecca, as the Holy Quran suggests, was the pinnacle of Islam's growth. Some companions said to the Holy Prophet, insisted that the Holy Prophet should punish Suhail bin Am, that poet, because of his uh, cultural works, the poets he recited, many Muslims were killed in those wars. And Suhail bin Amr was a pagan at the time. Those companions insisted that they should take out the tooth, the teeth, the front teeth of this poet so that he cannot sing poems. But the Prophet refused that. Never in history we can see an example in which a victorious army treats his enemies, arch enemies, like this. This is what fueled Islam's growth. And the Holy Quran wants all people to learn from the great ethics and morals of the Holy Prophet. I wish that the entire humanity would use the Holy Prophet's great morals to resolve all the issues that we are dealing with today. Of course, this should be firstly adopted by the Muslims, the young Muslims. They should adopt the policies and the behavior of the Holy Prophet of Islam, especially during wartime, and then they can display to the world. 
قناعت بشه به تعبیر قرآن کریم The Holy Quran also emphasizes that this message should be delivered clearly. And by clearly, it means that there should be discussions, debates, so that the truth of the matter be known to everybody, so that people of other faiths also become convinced. The Muslim leaders, the Muslim countries and nations should begin this movement and follow the path of the Holy Prophet and then be preachers to the holy religion of Islam. I hope that this movement comes to existence so that we can display the culture of the Holy Prophet to the entire world and see this culture be implemented and practiced in the entire world on all political, economic, social, and familial grounds so that all these struggles of our modern world become resolved. May God bless Muhammad and his pure household. Oh, my God.